Welcome to a new session um, at the Understanding 3 conference. It's my uh, very dear pleasure to introduce Professor Lilia Gugova from the New Bulgarian University. Uh, Professor Gugova has a host of um, uh, uh, research and uh, academic pursuits and initiatives. It's uh, 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 quite an honor to be able to host a talk of hers and very much looking forward. Her talk today is titled Understanding and Inference in Recent Works on Scientific Understanding. Lilia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Andre, for introducing me and also for inviting me at this wonderful conference. I use the opportunity to thank also Richard David Roos for organizing together with you this reading group on understanding, which started in 2020 and lasted about two years. I hope it hasn't finished yet. Uh, so many of the ideas which I'm going to express today is actually were provoked by the questions which we discussed during the, the reading group. So uh, this is the topic, you announced it. And let me explain the motivation. So if we look at the current landscape of views on understanding, we can see two things. In the foreground, we can see several dividing lines which dominate the discussion. And these dividing lines are provoked by questions such as, is an understanding a species of knowledge or is it an ability or a mental state? Is there a non-explanatory understanding? Are there different species of understanding and so on? So it's not occasional that we have focused on the relationship between understanding and knowledge on the one hand and also understanding and explanation. This is because the roots of contemporary discussions on understanding are in philosophy of science and in epistemology. So in philosophy of science, the interest in understanding was revived just to uh, as a way to resolve this uh, problem of multiplicity, of multiplication of views of explanation. It was Michael Friedman who first suggested that, okay, we may probably not achieve a general theory of explanation, but we may achieve a general theory of understanding, which explain why actually we have different types of explanations uh, aimed at the same goal to achieve understanding. And in epistemology, uh, the interest in uh, understanding grew up out of uh, the interest uh, in analyzing knowledge. I think in the previous talk, Professor Stoenes group illuminated this connection, so I will not speak about it. This is in the foreground. These are the discussions in the foreground. But if one uh, give a second look at the current landscape of discussion, he or she will see in the background some similarities between the different views which go across the dividing lines. And unfortunately, these similarities are rarely discussed. For example, although we have this dividing line between factivists and non-factivists, it's also a fact that both parties agree in a sense that some answering to the facts seem indispensable for understanding. And also many agree that understanding seems associated with one or another type of correct inference. So uh, given this foreground and background, I, I asked myself the following. What, what, uh, what if we change the places of the foreground and background? What if we, what could be seen if we put in the foreground one of the mentioned above similarities and, for example, the assumed connection between understanding and inference? And so I arrived at the following point for today. I first uh, go through and present the different uses of inference in some recent accounts of scientific context. 
understanding. I have chosen three books written and which were published in the same year, by the way, 2017. This is Elgin's book, Khalifa's book, and Derek's book. And we shall see that although they use different wording in order to express the relationship between inference and understanding, uh, there are different, seemingly different uses are in fact compatible with a minimally inferential account of understanding. When I'm speaking about the minimal inferential account, of course, I should explain what that means. So I will briefly present the core idea and the main corollaries of the proposed minimal inferential account of understanding. And then uh, I'll uh, compare this minimal inferential account of understanding with some already existing full-fledged inferential theories of understanding. Probably there are more than these two, which I have selected, but uh, for the sake of my talk, I think it's good to focus on the similarities and differences uh, between my minimal account and Yulikovsky, Yulikovsky's theory, which actually he spoke about yesterday, and Mark Newman's uh, inferential model of understanding, and I will end my talk with the final discussion. So let's begin with Elgin True Enough. So here are several citations taken, uh, quotations taken from her book, True Enough. Uh, she she uh, writes the following, to understand a topic, involves being able to draw inferences, but also raise questions, frame potentially fruitful inquiries and so forth. And in another place, at another place, she also adds, at the first approximation, an understanding is an epistemic commitment to a comprehensive, systematically linked body of information that is grounded in fact is duly responsive to reasons or evidence and enables non-trivial inference, argument and perhaps uh, action regarding the topic of information pertains to. And the final quotation from her book, I said earlier that an understanding of a topic involves know-how. We now can see that it involves knowing how to wield the commitments that bear on the topic, how to draw the inferences and perform the actions that the understanding licenses. That know-how is in Rylean terms, a multi-track disposition, an ability and propensity to make certain inferences and assure others to perform certain actions and refrain for others to engage in and endorse certain forms of higher order evaluation and criticism and avoid and repudiate others. So as you can see, uh, for LG, uh, understanding is not entirely reducible to inference, but it essentially involves being able to draw inferences. Sometimes, uh, you see, for example, this expression, this first quotation implies as, as, as if he speaks or understand, uh, understanding as a kind of ability, but uh, she also is not far from regarding understanding as a knowledge, but knowledge of the type know-how, know-how to draw the inference. And now let's go to the second book. This is Khalifa's Understanding, Explanation, and Scientific Knowledge. Probably it's good to start first with a brief uh, outline of his theory, uh, connecting understanding and explanation. So he proposed the so-called explanation knowledge science model, EKS uh, for short, according to which Understanding is a scientific knowledge of explanation. And the so-called seeing 
uh, seeing his abbreviation for scientific explanatory evaluation is the procedure by means of which one guarantees that she has a scientific knowledge of explanation and therefore understanding. But so you see in uh, his definition of understanding, inference doesn't show up explicitly, but in the same time, we can find the following uh, saying by him, to make an inference from an experiment is a kind of seeing. And in so far seeing or scientific explanatory evaluation is the procedure by means of which we achieve scientific knowledge of explanation and thus understanding it follows that making an inference is an essential part of the procedure by means of which we achieve understanding. And he also writes the following experimental inference is the paradigmatic scientific method for forming beliefs about explanation. Experimental inference entails safely true seeing. So it's a similar to the above quotation, but here he focuses on a specific type of inference, which he calls experimental inference. And the final quotation, which actually precedes uh, in the book, the others, is the following, which is probably the most telling, that the ability to reason counterfactually is essential to minimal understanding. So we, it's a kind of a necessary condition for having minimal understanding. One cannot achieve minimal understanding without this ability to reason counterfactually or to answer what if questions using Irikov's words. And finally, of course, we cannot avoid it, uh, are some quotations from the Rex uh, Wakatosh Prize winning book, Understanding Scientific Understanding, which we discussed extensively in our reading book, which I mentioned at the beginning. So again, let me briefly, just briefly present the Rex theory of understanding, for he, he makes a distinction between understanding phenomena and understanding and theory. For him to understand, we understand phenomena through explanation uh, based on intelligible theories. According to his criterion for the intelligibility of theories, the so-called set, a scientific theory T in one or more of its representations is intelligible for scientists in context C if they, the scientists, can recognize qualitatively characteristics consequences of T without performing exact calculations. So we, here again, like in the case, uh, in the case with uh, Palipa, we don't have a direct reference to the word and the concept of inference, but uh, drawing qualitatively or being able to recognize qualitatively characteristic consequences in fact, means that you are able to infer these consequences from the theory, which is intelligible for you. But at other place, by the way, the, the concept of uh, inference appears, and it's a very, uh, how to say, representative of uh, what's the place which directs assigned to inferences in his theory in the following quotation. How do intelligible theories lead to explanations which we provide us with understanding of the explained phenomena? Direct illustrates that with the following example, the intelligibility of the kinetic theory of cases is a precondition for constructing the model-based explanation of gas phenomenological law. But in what sense does this explanation provide understanding? The answer is by connecting our empirical knowledge of Jesus behavior with accepted theoretical knowledge, in this case with Newtonian mechanics. 
And this connection, so by connecting our empirical knowledge of Gaussian behavior with accepted theoretical knowledge, the explanation allows us to make inferences about the behavior of cases in novel situations and to extend, apply, and refine our knowledge. So we, again, we achieve understanding my, by means of explanations in so far as our explanations allow us to make inferences about the behavior of explained phenomena. And now uh, I'm going to summarize uh, what we found about the relationship between understanding and inference in direct uh, LG and uh, Lippert school. So what we find is the following, understanding involves being able to draw inferences and enables non-trivial inference is the essence of Elgin's quotation. The ability to reason is essential to minimal understanding, according to Khalifa, and it, an explanation provides understanding in so far it allows us to make inferences. So you see, I, I have uh, highlighted in different colors the different words they used in order to denote the connection between inference and uh, understanding. We see the words are different, but although the words uh, they use are different to express the connection between understanding and inference, we can safely conclude that all of them, all three of them, see this connection as non-occasional, so non-arbitrary, uh, which means in a sense for all of them, the connection between understanding and inference, although they express it in a different way, is essential in one or another sense. And I think that uh, all these three different accounts of the connection between understanding and inference are compatible with uh, what I call a minimal inferential account of understanding. And now I'm going to present the main idea and also the main, the most important corollaries of this main idea. So because it's called minimal inferential account, of course, the core idea is simple. According to this core idea, as a scientist or a subject, it might not be necessarily a scientist, understands P, a P might be a theory, a phenomenon, or a linguistic expression, if and only if S can produce correct inferences from the knowledge which S associates with P. So what can we uh, infer from here if we buy this minimal inferential account of understanding. So you see, this menu, it's called minimal because it does not directly say anything about what understanding is. And this is, as I show further on, the main difference by my minimal account and the theories and models of inferential theories and models of understanding proposed, for example, by Likowski and Mark Newman. So uh, my minimal account is silent about what uh, understanding is. It only insists on the fact that uh, understanding is manifested in the ability or in the behavior of drawing specific inferences connected to the phenomenon or the thing which is understood. So what are the most important uh, corollaries of this idea? So uh, the first one is that the more non-trivial inferences S can draw based on her knowledge of P, the deeper her understanding of P. So I think we had the same discussion yesterday that it's not the number of inferences which matters because the number might be huge, but all these huge, uh, all these uh, yeah, 
many differences, big trivial inferences. So the importance, what is important is to have various types of non-trivial inferences, which we can draw based on our knowledge of P and uh, our understanding of P. And also another corollary is that an explanation of P increases one's understanding of P only and only if and only if it allows us to make additional inferences. So not all explanations of in fact understanding providing. So if an explanation, it might work as an explanation, it might be a, an answer, for example, of a Y question. But if this answer of I question does not allow us to make some new inferences about the explained phenomenon, it doesn't in fact increase our understanding of this phenomenon. But what is even more important, and this is connected to the talk which we listened at the beginning of today's session about non-explanatory understanding, the minimal inferential account of understanding is perfect be compatible with the view that explanations are not the only means to understanding. Other structure, uh, for example, makers, so to call them, could, if they increase our ability to infer, to make some new inferences about the phenomenon which is understood, they also could increase our understanding. We can say about them, that they are also understanding providers. And by the way, I see could, this is my criterion uh, and my answer of the question which I asked to Iker uh, during his session, and that in order to decide whether a particular structure is an understanding provider, even if it is not an explanation, is to say uh, and to tell whether this structure allows us to make some new inferences about the phenomenon which we are interested in. And there are some good candidates for such structures which are not equivalent to explanations. For example, predictions. In uh, another talk which I gave at another understanding conference, by the way, the one organized by Daniel Kostic and other people, predictions. We may speak not only about explanatory understanding, we may speak also about predictive understanding because under certain conditions, predictions could increase our ability to infer something new about the predicted phenomena and thus to increase our understanding of it. But of course, not all predictions are uh, understanding, providing or increasing our understanding. Uh, and also because you probably know this, that I'm working at the Department of Cognitive Science and uh, Psychology. And as a part of this department for a long time, I have been interested in studying categorization, which is a very basic cognitive process. And by the way, I think that categorizations or um, statements such as P is an instance of Q, of a particular category Q, they can also increase our understanding. For example, the discovery that, uh, for example, uh, some, a particular disease is caused by viruses or by a specific virus, is a, it's a kind of categorization but it also uh, increases uh, our understanding of the disease. So, uh, of course, there are other cores, uh, corollaries, by the way. Um, but now, because we, uh, I think I am running out of my time, I, I would prefer to go to uh, the comparison between the minimal inferential account, which I suggest. Uh, to you, uh, and uh, the existing, I call them full-fledged inferential theories of understanding. I call them full-fledged because they also involve statements about what, what understanding is. 
uh, or what are the mechanisms which underlie understanding, which, it, which is the case with Mark Newman's um, model of understanding. So uh, according to Ilikowski, and he actually repeated this again yesterday, understanding is, is the ability to make correct inferences many of which are counterfactual. So he identifies understanding with the ability to make correct inferences. Newman uh, takes different uh, direction. He, uh, in his uh, 2012 paper, which actually inspired the discussion between him and Khalifa, uh, he uh, says the, the following there. We come to understand a phenomenon scientifically by developing mental models that incorporate the correct causal and logical properties responsible for the causes or logical properties of the phenomenon being explained. So he doesn't provide direct answer of what understanding is, but he, pro he does provide an answer of the question, what Underwise understanding. For him, uh, we need uh, to develop some mental models in order to achieve understanding. So, mental models are the understanding provided. Um, you see the difference between his theory and Yudkovsky's theory because Yudkovsky, according to Yudkovsky, understanding is a kind of ability. And according to Newman, understanding built on mental states, so mental models, if we view mental models as kind of mental state. So, uh, and now you can see the difference between the minimal account, which I uh, propose here. For I, the my account, as I already mentioned, it's uh, say, it doesn't say anything about what understanding is and uh, what underlies, what kind of mechanisms underlie uh, understanding. I only, so the only idea which the minimal account insists on is that understanding is manifested, is demonstrated in a variety of correct inferences. Why I prefer I, I, uh, this minimal account instead of uh, how to say, choose a specific answer of the question of understanding is because the very idea, as I, I, that's why I started with the motivation. My idea was not to propose just another theory or model of understanding. We have enough of them, which each of them pretend to be the different, to be different from the, its rivals. My, uh, the, um, the main motivating idea was to see into the background, to see and to try to propose an account which is compatible with all the similarities which are going in the background across the different dividing lines which we see and observe at the foreground when we look at the landscape of the different discussions on an understanding. So that's why I preferred such an account, such a minimal account, which in fact is uh, as much compatible as possible with the different rivals theories. And I think this one that understanding is manifest, the manifestations of understandings are associated with inferences, is in fact compatible with different views of, about what the understanding is. It's com this view is compatible with the theory that understanding is a mental state. It's also compatible uh, though with the view that understanding is ability or something else. So what the, uh, the uh, advantages of the minimal account in respect to the uh, other inferential views, but not only inferential views of understanding. I think the main advantage is that it is more inclusive as it does not take a side in the debate, for example, whether understanding is a mental state, a species of knowledge or an ability. And it also enables other types of inference 
besides the counterfactual inferences to bear understanding. By the way, Ilikovsky, in his original paper, when he first provided the account of his theory of uh, his inferential theory of understanding, he was also open minded enough to say that not all correct inferences which we associate with understanding are mm, counterfactual inferences. He said that many of them are counterfactual, which implies that not all of them. But if we listen carefully to his talk yesterday, yesterday, at least what I heard in his talk is that he associates understanding only with answering what if questions, so with questions which are, uh, which imply counterfactual inferences, which I don't think is good. I think that other inferences besides counterfactual can also lead to increasing our understanding. And now I'm about to finish. Uh, this is a general summary and also something which I, uh, I would appreciate if you uh, can comment on it. So the proposed minimal account of understanding should not be seen as, as I already said, as just another rival theory or model of understanding. It rather reveals the common that is shared by the existing theories. And this common is that various kinds of inference constitute an essential part of the manifestations of understanding. So inferences are not exhaustive. This is not the only manifestation of understanding, but definitely an essential one at least according to the authors, which I quoted uh, several slides ago. So by focusing on what the different theories of understanding share and not on what divides them, the proposed minimal account could serve as a common ground for a joint effort directed toward a better understanding of scientific understanding. And I also would like to tell you that part of these ideas, you can find more carefully uh, outlined uh, in a paper of mine, which will appear soon in International Studies in the Philosophy of Science. And uh, thank you for your attention. And I should apologize for my voice, but I'm still recovering from a cold. I had two weeks ago. I hope you were able to hear me well. Thank you so much for attending my talk. You, you're muted, Andre. All right, thanks so much to Professor Gugova for, for the wonderful talk. And now we have a few questions lined up. Uh, we have two questions online, so let's start with those. Uh, first, uh, Insa, please go ahead. Uh, Insa, I'm afraid we can't uh, hear you. No, she she sent a message saying that. Um, Excellent, I see. She's writing the the question. Thank you so much, Magia. And let me just uh, voice uh, Insa's question. Uh, she says, uh, and I quote, thank you very much for your talk. I like the minimal account, but your account seems to take for granted that understanding requires knowledge insofar as that the inferences are based on knowledge. Uh, why are true beliefs or the like not sufficient? Thanks so much, Insa, for the question. Okay, good question, by the way. Thank you for this answer. Uh, yes, you are right. I tend to agree with you that we can draw inferences not only on the basis of our knowledge, but simply on the basis of what we believe in and what we just accept. 
yeah. But uh, I should add, because like you, I am a minimal factivist in a sense, not quasi, but minimal factivist. If we want to reliably arrive at correct inferences, because this is important for understanding, both for factivist and non factivist accounts of understanding. So uh, to, uh, to be able reliably to arrive systematically on correct inferences, we need to start from knowledge. Because of course we may have correct inferences when our premises are not necessarily true, but reliably correct inferences we can only achieve when our premises are true, or at least when some of our premises are true. This is, this is my own, but I agree with you that uh, having correct inferences is perfectly compatible with drawing them from beliefs and uh, uh, ideas which are just accepted or taken for granted, yeah. All right, thanks so much, Lilia, for answering. Uh, next up, we, are not, we have a second question from uh, Dr. Sultanesco. Olivia, please go ahead. I'm afraid we can't. Sorry, yes, yes. It's a bit early, so I'm not fully awake. <laughs> no, it's not that early anymore. Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I have a question about the minimal account as well. You said that the minimal account applies not just to theories, to, to understanding of theories and to, under, to understanding phenomena, but also to understanding linguistic expression. So it's supposed to capture the phenomenon of understanding linguistic expressions. Um, and the account says that uh, someone understands a linguistic expression if and only if she can produce correct inferences. It can be argued that um, a necessary condition for producing any kind of inference, for engaging in any kind of uh, inference, is the understanding of the relevant expressions, that there cannot be inference without basic understanding of linguistic expressions. Um, do you take that to be a problem for the account? Or no, no, it's not think... a problem. Exactly, the account says exactly that the understanding is manifested in correct inferences. So we, uh, using correctly a linguistic expression, they demonstrate us that we understand it. This is exactly what the minimal account said, that understanding is manifested or demonstrated in the correct inferences. The cor more broadly speaking, correct uses of a specific linguistic expression. Thank you, that's helpful. But then uh, I take it that the account is circular insofar as uh, it presupposes notions like uh, inference and knowledge that they themselves require understanding. I don't necessarily think that that's a problem. Uh, it may be that the only conception of uh, understanding that we can articulate is bound to be circular. I, I, I was just curious whether you agree with that. Um, I, I, in fact, I, I need to think more about that uh, in whether it is circular or not. But in general, I, I, I don't have a definite answer at the moment, but I'll tell something which I, I really believe in and have some, uh, have some reasons also in support of this belief that the circular argument or circular explanation, for example, is not necessarily bad. If a circular argument or a circular explanation or another circular stru conceptual structure increases our ability to make additional inferences. So it bears uh, some understanding, so it helps us to arrive to some new inferences, then it's helpful uh, despite its circular. So circularity is not necessarily bad. This is my general conviction. And uh, yeah, I have written about it somewhere else. Thank you, that's very helpful. Yeah, thanks. All right, thanks so much, Olivia, for the question. Olivia, for answering. Next up, I think we have a question from Dr. Magdina Zogdas. Maria, please go ahead. Um, thank, thank you for your talk. I really enjoy it. And I think I'm going to ask something relating to the paper that you mentioned at the end. So I was wondering how this um, 
idea of correct inferences relates to truth because we usually tend to believe that a good instance of um, correctness, inferentially speaking, is truth preservation. But so I was wondering which, which are the salient marks that we are going to be able to find when evaluating the correctness of the inferences when assessing understanding? Uh, because if you give up truth, then it's going to be messy, this scenario, right? So, um... Um, so usually those who are both, uh, again, this is something which goes across uh, the dividing lines between factivists and non-factivists. Both of them, both camps, at least some of the representatives from both sides speak about correct inferences. And what they mean, if I understand them correctly, is to uh, having inferences which conclusions uh, somehow speak to the facts, so, uh, factually correct. So that means a correct inference. It doesn't necessarily presuppose having true premises, but uh, having a true conclusion is necessary. In other is necessary is in order to say that the particular inference is correct. And also the logic should be correct. So it should really follow from the premises. So, oh, but in those cases, you are going to have different roads to, to arrive to the same conclusion, right? So uh, yes. there, there are going to be uh, alternative logical theories that can reconstruct the inferences that are followed to arrive to the same conclusion. And it's not so clear to me how you are going to be able to identify the correct one. Although all of them uh, from this, from my, per not, it's not only my perspective, but from this minimal perspective of understanding, uh, for which in order to have understanding, the only thing we need is to have correct inferences. Even if contradictory theories lead to correct inferences, we should admit that uh, they all provide us with understanding. And in history of science and even in contemporary science, we have a plenty of such examples. For example, rival models, which are otherwise incompatible, uh, but they explain correctly certain phenomena. Sometimes they explain correctly the same phenomena. Of course, we cannot say that both models are true. Probably both of them are false, but still we can insist, take on, if we buy this minimal account, that they provide us with understanding in so far as they lead to correct inferences. Although they're incompatible, they're different and so on. They provide us with an understanding, probably different understanding, but we cannot refuse, we cannot say that uh, one model provides us with understanding the other doesn't. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. All right, thanks so much, Magia, for the question and Gilia for answering. With your permission, I think I'll just insert a question of my own. Um, so uh, thanks so much. For, uh, oh, we have a question from Lihanda. Okay, I'll just I'll just go first and then. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, thanks so much for for anchoring into yesterday's conversation as well uh, with uh, with uh, Petri and with Magia and. Um, uh, I, I still have a quick follow-up to, to, uh, to make. So uh, when you um, uh, presented the um, minimal understanding account, I think it was slide seven or uh, something like that, you had a very nice caveat, namely that uh, these are supposed to be non-trivial inferences. Yeah. Um, but that uh, sort of, prompted the question for me, um, how do we uh, settle the question of uh, which inferences are non-trivial or substantive or interesting or fruitful or deep or uh, in other ways uh, valuable and which not? And it would seem that in order to do that, we would need a non-inferential criteria, right? Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, so uh, 
I think you asked a similar question yesterday. I yeah. forgot <laughs> to whom you asked it, but you had something uh, similar. Okay, I agree here with the, the general contextual theory of understanding, which, for example, the REF launched, uh, that uh, the evaluation of uh, understanding is also pragmatic, is always pragmatic. We, also, we always take into consideration some pragmatic uh, reasons. For example, it depends on what scientists are interested in, whether they'll find an inference trivial or non-trivial. Of course, there are inferences which are logically trivial. I would not go all of you, I think. For example, if uh, from A and B, we can infer both A and also B. This is a trivial something, a tri trivial inference from a con conjunction. But uh, non-trivial inferences, it's not enough to be just logically non-trivial. It's important to be non-trivial from a pragmatic perspective. So to be, to, to lead to something new, at least something new in the eyes of scientists which are making them. Something new and something interesting also is important. So definitely this pragmatic, the context is important. So what scientists are looking for is important. So that seems entirely um, um, uh, plausible to me. And, and thanks for saying that. Um, um, and um, it just seems to me that that makes room for uh, a host of other features, as you were saying, novelty, surprise, interest. Yeah, of course. That's why it's a minimal account. And it's yeah. this one, minimal. I, I, uh, it's incompatible with other whatever accounts which add some, some other stuff. I see. Values, context, and so on. That's that's really helpful. Thanks thanks so much for that. Uh, and, Thank you. Uh, Gihad, I believe you had uh, another question. Would you like me to turn the sound off yes. uh, this computer? And uh, there will be a 30 second gap so we can uh, oh, switch, okay. <laughs> switch sounds here. Let's see. Okay, now, Go yeah, on. yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, a short, uh, so um, regarding your uh, uh, remarks about uh, extending it to a uh, non-explanatory structure, or let, uh, let's say, yeah, you, you would like to have bearers of understanding that are non-explanatory, then uh, that would uh, imply that also your uh, concept or notion of inference should be somehow broader or enlarged because you, you you will get yeah, yeah. Um, at least uh, uh, yeah, if, if, if you look to to, to Lipton's example yeah uh, all kinds of other did you thought about this or uh, yeah I, I use uh, I we cannot hear uh, do you hear me uh, yeah I think uh, uh, that's ah. now do you hear me. Just a second. Okay, how you would need yeah. to. All right. Thanks so much. Please go ahead for for the answer. So now you hear me, I suppose. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, I have a minimal account of understanding, but I have a very inclusive account of inference. For me, an inference is uh, a reason that a reasoned move from a set of sentences, which we call premises, to a sentence or a statement, which we call conclusion. So not any move from a set of sentences to another sentence is the inference. It should be reasoned. So it should, uh, the conclusion should follow from the premises either uh, be, obeying a particular rule. It might be logical, might be a material rule in a real sense, and might be a kind of a schema, not a rule. And so this is my idea of inference. It's very general. 
And the only restriction on the move between one set of sentences to a conclusion is that it should be a reasoned move. It should be made for a reason. It comes very close to this uh, semantic differentialism of Brandon. So which is, would you be, can you hear me if I talk from- I'm not very well, I can hear you, but it's better to come to the, closer to the microphone. Yes. Can you hear me better this way? Yeah, yeah, I hear, I hear uh, you and now. Then uh, would you be able to accommodate these cases of tacit knowledge or let's say knowledge, uh, analogical knowledge as uh, uh, through Kuhnian exemplars or uh, knowledge through manipulation and uh, this kind of tacit knowledge? And if you have such a request that it should be expressed in some sentence or conclusion? Uh, you mean to... Uh, to adopt this knowledge as a yeah, if if if, if, if we take let, let's say the uh, Lipton's example of the tacit knowledge, right, and understanding that comes through tacit knowledge. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah yeah I can adopt it. So tacit visual. knowledge also contains not just tacit premises, but also tacit schemas for drawing inferences from these premises. Okay, then. Th so, so you will need to also to to have something like that, yeah. And in order. To, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and uh, uh, can I put an? Uh, sure. Don't worry. Uh, only. Um, I was thinking also to ask you. You 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 said that understanding is manifested, right? You you wrote, but so you are I, closer to, let's say, uh, that that means that you 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 see it as a disposition. Uh, for so uh, closer to uh, Hank's uh, uh, ability, or uh, let's say that someone doesn't uh, but, uh, manifest to this understanding. Yeah, I understood you, uh, but no, uh, actually, I, I think I mentioned at a certain point of my talk that uh, that's why I'm speaking about the manifestation, because the manifestation could come, uh, could be a manifestation of ability but could be also a manifestation of the working of a particular mechanism or a particular process going in the mind, for example, somewhere else. So uh, it's compatible with direct view that understanding is kind of ability, but it's also compatible with other views. So it's the dispositional in a sense. So I focus only on the manifestation of understanding and I'm silent about what these manifestations are manifestations of. But of course, I would not say that uh, manifestation exhausts understanding. It might be or might be not. So it might be something behind the manifestations which manifests in itself. Uh, but, uh, but it's important in, in order to see the, the deep so to compare and to see how deep it is, right? In, in, in order to see the numbers of uh, inferences you can draw. So in order to see how deep it is, I should see the, the number and the types of inferences. And all of them are manifested. I should not go behind that. Should not go behind what is manifested. Because the inferences, the types and number, they are manifested. Mm -hmm. But you would say that if someone says, okay, now I, aha, uh -huh, I, I understand, but I, 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 he didn't draw any kind of inference, but he says only, oh, I understood now what, what is, uh, let's say. Oh, I, I would say that he or she has just a subjective feeling of understanding, but mm -hmm. then in order to prove to me or to always the people uh, outside that he or she really understands, mm -hmm. uh, so he should uh, demonstrate some inferences, so some ability to say something new about the object of uh, his or her understanding. So in a way it's closer to ability as Hank. Uh, again, it <laughs> might be coming from ability, but might not. It's, it's compatible, yeah. In, a, in this sense, it's compatible with direct view. In this sense, it, it's close to it. But it's also close if you are not, uh, if you think about understanding as something 
produced by some mental mechanisms, this is also uh, my minimal account is compatible with this as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Ehart, for the question and Lilia for answering. Um, uh, there might still be time for one last question. If there is, uh, would you, uh, is there any question um, uh, from the online audience? Well, um, if not, uh, these are issues that we'll keep thinking about, and uh, hopefully, as we understand them better, we'll be able to draw uh, finer and finer inferences. Thank you so much, Lilia, for the talk, and I'm sure everyone's joining me in uh, applauding you. Thank you for your attention and all the, all the questions and comments.